Today we'll talk about a drug reaction called as acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis. It is shortly called as AGEP. So it is one of the conditions wherein there is rapid appearance of sheets of non-follicular sterile pustules on an erythematous base, which is usually localized to the major flexures which is always in response to a drug. Uh, a rapid evolution of these uh, sterile pustules, which are non-follicular, there will be sheets. That is hundreds of sterile pustules, which uh, which arises on an erythematous base. So if there is an erythematous base, there is this hundred pustules, which arises on an erythematous base. That's how it presents. And um, it is usually in response to a drug. So it, it presents as a drug reaction. And the lesion is located subcornially in the epidermis. It's a self-limiting reaction and uh, it resolves without any sequelae. So it affects around 1 to 5 million per year population and the adults are more commonly affected here. And uh, the mean age of occurrence is around 56 years. Females again are more prone to getting this. And uh, associated diseases, 90% so of the cases are drug related. So drug has to be, uh, drug history has to be elicited properly in this condition. There are certain viral infections. So also which predisposes to this and other infections like we have mycoplasma pneumonia infection or coxsackie virus infection or parvovirus cytomegalovirus or certain mercury exposure or spider bites also can cause um, uh, agep like reactions pathophysiology here we see that there is drug specific cd4 plus and cd8 plus t cells which have been identified from the site of the lesion as well as from the peripheral blood of patients there's high level of the cxa8 uh, which is uh, identified from the lesions and the peripheral blood has more amounts of interleukin 8 which is a neutrophil chemoattractant okay so since it is a neutrophil chemoattractant in the lesions also you see that there are neutrophilic infiltrates which are present and also in the blood there will be neutrophilia present okay and also also, sometimes if there is mutation of this interleukin 36 RN gene, which codes for the interleukin 36 receptor antagonist, that is said to predispose uh, to developing uh, AGEP. So, this mutation also will predispose the patient to get pustular psoriasis, which is uh, one of the very close uh, differential diagnosis of AGEP. Uh, viral etiology, we have Coxsackie virus A9, Ecovirus 11 and 30, Hepatitis B virus, Epstein B virus. Along with that, we have Cytomegalovirus and other viruses which are uh, predisposing to getting uh, AGEP. Predisposing factors, drugs mainly. Uh, we have to know that it is pristinamycin, amino penicillins, quinolones, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, the antimalarials, sulfonamides and other sulfur drugs, turbinafin which is an antifungal and diltiazem. So, as dermatologists, we need to know that uh, we use uh, chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine also frequently. We also give uh, antibiotics to the patients. We also use turbinafin frequently for fungal infections and sulfonamide antibiotics. So, all of these uh, can cause uh, AGEP-like reactions. So, phenytoin and carbamazepine, antifungals like itraconazole and turbinafin, which are commonly used to treat our dermatophyte infections. So, that's very important. Antimalarials like hydroxychloroquine, beta-lactam antibiotics like amoxicillin, cefaclor, cefiroxine, cefaxelin uh, then penicillins calcium channel blockers like diltiazem and nifedipine macrolide antibiotics like azithromycin erythromycin spiramycin other antibiotics like ciprofloxacin doxycycline isoniazid streptomycin and sulfonamides other drugs we have like acetaminophen allopurinol so drug history has to be elicited properly in a patient to confirm that it is agep clinical features exposure to the culprit drug will be present two to five days prior to the onset of these lesions and uh, the period of latency is very short here so within two to five days of the patient taking the drug you see the lesions appearing so that short latency also will tell us that it is agep uh, before the onset of the lesions there will be itching or burning sensation in the skin and sometimes it may be asthenic also careful history of the drug uh, whether it is over-the-counter drug or if it is a prescribed drug has to be elicited so the appearance of sheets of hundreds of sterile non-follicular pustules will be seen and the catch point here is a major flexors are involved here okay so the flexors or the folds are the most commonly affected sites it can also be the face neck axilla inframammary and inguinal folds it is not necessary that only flexures are most commonly affected but it is not necessary that only flexures should be affected non-flexural sites can also be affected here so along with the sterile non-follicular pustules that we see we also see facial edema atypical target like lesions purpura 
blisters vesicles erythema multiforme like lesions also uh, we see here okay mucous membrane is not as much involved but if it is involved rarely only mouth will be involved nikolsky sign uh, would be positive here which is seen in time figures and other disorders and um, sometimes because of this it will lead to misinterpretation of sjs and ten also because of the presence of the nikolsky sign so the patient can be febrile also sometimes uh, the patients can have uh, leukocytosis neutrophilia a granulocytosis can be present hypocalcemia and hypoalbuminemia can be an occurrence with that uh, systemic involvement uh, very rarely seen if it is uh, associated with systemic involvement it will usually be self limiting uh, renal insufficiency or pleural effusion or hypoxemia uh, can be expected in the patient and um, after the resolution they can be post pustular desquamation which is left behind so the, there is some diagnostic criteria to say it is um, a gp so appearance of hundreds of sterile non follicular pustules is one one thing and histopathologically we have to see spongiosis and epidermal pustule formation which is subcorneal pustules would be present fever of more than 38 degrees would be present neutrophil count would be elevated there is an acute evolution that is within 2 to 5 days of taking the drug it will start appearing okay so appearance of the pustules histopathological feature fever the blood neutrophil count and the acute evolution other diagnostic criteria to diagnose uh, a gp so we have another clinical variant we have this entity called acute uh, generalized exanthematous pustulosis the variant would be acute localized exanthematous pustulosis wherein only single body area can be involved like neck can be involved in this uh, particular variant so here you can see the sterile um, i mean the pustules the sheets of hundreds of pustules seen in the major flexions in the axilla you can find that the lesions are present in this fold okay Uh, again here you can see the pustules with an erythematous base right so these are the lesions of agep around the mouth you can see the face also can be involved uh, in agep pathology here histopathology will uh, tell us this spongiform subcorneal or intraepidermal pustules neutrophilic perivascular infiltrate because interleukin 8 is again present here which is a neutrophilic chemoattractant necrotic keratinocytes along with that mild to moderate the papillary edema dermal edema would be present so important feature here is the spongiform subcorneal pustules and neutrophilic infiltrate okay so here we can see the same lesions here the subcorneal location of the pustules uh, as well as uh, here you can see that there's diffuse spongiosis in this this um, spongiosis seen along with dermal infiltrate upper dermal infiltrates present here um that's after amoxicillin this was identified again the neutrophilic collection you can see differential diagnosis most important differential diagnosis and most commonly which is confused with the agp is the von jimbus type of the pustular psoriasis so pustular psoriasis has to be differentiated from uh, agp we have also subcorneal pustular dermatosis one of the neutrophilic dermatosis also called as sneden wilkinson disease uh, again a similar picture but here we see a sign called as hypopion sign again major flexures are involved here sometimes it is asymptomatic also then pustular vasculitis in severe cases if there is bully blisters present then tn again becomes a differential candida and uh, because in candida also we see the whitish uh, in the oral mucosa especially so that becomes a differential and uh, another drug reaction called as dress drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms so that again becomes a differential diagnosis so as i told you differentiating egep from psoriasis that is the pustular psoriasis is important here in um, psoriasis the patient will have a history of psoriasis here there's no history but it is possible distribution pattern in folds as i told you it is more generalized than psoriasis in duration of pustules it is a shorter duration 2 to 5 days as i mentioned to you earlier whereas it's a longer duration here fever would be present here of short duration this is of long duration and history of drug reaction would be present here here it is uncommon okay the recent drug administration also is present here it is also very un uncommon there arthritis is rare here but arthritis associated with the pustular psoriasis right uh and histology if you see there is spongiform subcorneal or intraepidermal pustule with edema of the papillary dermis vasculitis and uh, exocytosis of eosinophils single cell necrosis of the keratinocytes would be present important thing is with this whereas here there is subcorneal intraepidermal pustules present here papillomatosis and acanthosis are the additional features that you see in mundros microabscesses spongiform pustules of cogoj all the other features would be seen in uh, psoriasis if it is present along with the history of psoriasis again is important okay management for investigations we carefully list the drug history skin biopsy 
complete blood count will tell us leukocytosis neutrophilia uh, if there is any deranged lft that has to be taken care of hypocalcemia hypoalbuminemia can be present acute phase reactants like crp would be elevated in such patients septic screening also needs to be done so the most important thing here to do is to stop the offending drug so if the offending drug is stopped half the treatment is done so you stop the offending drug and then you give uh, for if it is a mild condition not very severe you give topical uh, potent topical corticosteroids application if it is severe then you give oral steroids as well and then emollients can be given uh, and then if there is renal impairment supportive care needs to be given with iv fluids hemodynamic monitoring to be done the antibiotics are added if the patient is febrile and has any foci of infection then you add antibiotics so generally agp carries an excellent prognosis if the offending drug is stopped so it's a self limiting condition as such but you have to or uh, stop the offending drug for the condition to resolve so this is all about acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis